One killer bass line. One struggling bassist. Ah, crap. Ten simple challenges. Result, guaranteed bass line victory. Yes! I broke the Hysteria bass riff into many step-by-step -step challenges. If you can nail each challenge, then by the end of this video, I'll show you how to glue them all together so that you're legit playing the whole mother flippin' riff. Mother flippin'. And these challenges will improve your overall playing and teach you how to deconstruct any bass line for easier learning. So what challenge can you make it to? Let's find out. The first thing you need to tackle is getting your index middle alternating plucking fast enough, because at full speed you're going to need to crank out 16th notes at 93 BPM. What the hell does that mean? Well, this song is at 93 beats per minute, which sounds like this. One, two, three, four, and 16th notes means that you play four evenly spaced notes inside each one of those beats, like one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. There are two problems with launching into trying to play this. One is actually playing in rhythm and not sloppy at that speed, and two is keeping up your endurance for multiple minutes, which we'll tackle in the next challenge. First, let's just make sure your plucking technique doesn't suck. Pluck index middle, pull across, don't over pluck, and straighten your wrist. Now you're ready for your first challenge. You're gonna play a group of four 16th notes on an open A string, one E and a, then rest for a beat to recover, then another group, three E and a, then another rest, and we'll take that through the open string moves of the song's progression to the E string, one E and a rest, three E and a rest to the D, one E and a rest, three E and a rest, back to the A, one E and a rest, three E and a rest. And just touch the strings with your fretting hand to mute on those rests. There's a good chance you'll need to start this much slower than full song speed. Maybe try starting with your metronome around 50 beats per minute. One E and a rest. Rest, and then work your way up two, three, maybe five BPM from there. Just don't go faster than you can keep your subdivisions clean and even. Subdivisions means the notes that you play inside the beat, E and uh. If they're not even, it's gonna sound like a total mess when you speed this up. So here's nice clean subdividing. Three, four, one E and a two, three E and a four, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. And here's some bad subdividing. You're fired. Hmm. If you're not confident with your subdividing, you can check yourself by setting your metronome to click on every 16th note like this. One E and a, two E and a. That'll help program your brain to start hearing those even divisions. Just make sure you still use a normal metronome sometimes so that you get some practice dividing the beat on your own. Let's do challenge one together with the actual song. We'll just be playing with normal bass tone for now, and we'll get to the nasty distorted tone later on. If this is too fast for you, drop that YouTube speed control to 50%, and then once you nail that, work your way up to 75, and then try full speed. And same goes for the rest of the challenges we play together. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four. Just getting through this first challenge might take a lot of work, so don't get discouraged. Starting slow is not a bad thing. You'll actually get to the finish line faster if you go slow enough to start with good habits. Otherwise, you bake in a bunch of bad habits, then you have to go back, fix them, and it just takes longer. It might take you weeks or more to master all these challenges, so watch through to the end now to get the lay of the land then bookmark this video and keep coming back to work on it. Also, we're not working on the full song in this video, but I made you a complete Hysteria bass tab with sheet music so you don't have to go looking up some crappy tab later. The link is in the description. Once you can nail challenge one, you might still run out of gas trying to get through the whole song, so let's tackle that with challenge two. At three minutes, 40 seconds of almost constant 16th notes, this song is a serious test of your endurance. So how do you get all the way through without getting burnt out? Well, if you wanted to like run a marathon, would your first training run be 26 miles? No, you'd start with way shorter distances and work your way up. Shut up, been a bass player. So we'll do the same thing with Hysteria. Challenge two is for you to play nonstop open string 16th notes along with a song in sets of four bars. And my full challenge to you is to make it through eight sets of four bars in a row, which would be 32 bars total, which will build your endurance up to about a minute, 20 seconds. 
To get there, just start with one set at a time and work your endurance up gradually. We'll do one set together now so you can hear how this goes, but I'm not gonna make you watch a minute and 20 seconds of open string 16th notes because I get fired from YouTube. <laughs> so you'll have to test yourself on this full challenge with your metronome or along with the song. So here we go, remember to breathe, keep your subdivisions clean and even, and use the speed controls to work your way up to tempo as needed. Here we go, one, two, three, four. Quick tip, if you're losing your place rhythmically, try putting a slight accent on the first of every four plucks, like one E and a two E and a three E and a, that might help. If you can nail this challenge, which again means doing eight sets of what we just did in a row, you'll have enough stamina to make it from the intro all the way to the chorus riff, which is a little easier and has more breaks in the rhythm, so you get a rest with your plucking hand. So you've got your speed, you've got your endurance, now we need to get your fretting hand in shape, which will take us to challenge three. And if you hit a wall on any of these challenges, you might wanna check out my beginner to badass course over at bassbuzz.com. Here's a testimonial from a satisfied student. Beginner to badass helped me build a strong foundation so I could tackle these hysteria challenges. Buy it today. I am not being paid to say this. The open string bounce is a cool move where you play some open notes, then you mix in some fretted notes in between, and you get a cool sounding riff even though your fretting hand isn't working that hard. And that is what's happening behind the scenes for most of the hysteria bass line. We get a max of two fretted notes in a row before we get another open string pluck. What's tricky about this move is the coordination of switching between open plucks and fretted plucks. So let's dial that in before we get to our challenges with a simple exercise. I'm gonna explain and demo this really briefly. This is actually three mini exercises. So in the first one, you do two open string plucks, then one fretted note, just using the first two fretted notes of the bass line. So you practice that. Next, you work on alternating one open string and one fretted note like this. And finally, you'd work on one open string to two fretted notes. If you can do all three of those coordination exercises cleanly at a decent tempo, you'll find a lot of hysteria is surprisingly easy. But if it sounds like if it sounds like that right now, don't worry about it. It just takes practice. So challenge three is just to play the first beat of each bar through the progression, which would sound like this. Then you go to bar two, then bar three, and then bar four. And I'll give you a chance to try that after I explain the next couple challenges. And you would take this at a slower tempo if you need to. Don't start at the full speed just because you got your plucking hand there already. Challenge four is to add another chunk. So now you've got the first two beats of each chord through the progression. Rest, 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 etc. And then challenge five to finish up this open string bounce stuff would be to go all the way up to the last five notes of each bar except we'll keep it at just two beats of the third bar for reasons I'll soon explain. Let's try this together. You can either do challenge three, which is one beat of each bar, challenge four, which is two beats of each, or challenge five, which is all the open string bounce stuff. And again, use the speed controls if you need to. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four. the like button. Yeah, man, I clicked it. Did you click the subscribe too? You've got most of the line at this point. You're way more than halfway there. But what about those missing notes? Well, those beats have some trickier fretted notes with no open strings in between them, which is where we're gonna go next. You don't need insane fretting skills to play hysteria. There's no big sweep arpeggios or crazy long runs, but there are some slightly harder parts like this. And to be able to play stuff like that cleanly, you need efficient fretting technique. And I highly, highly recommend my five levels of bass finger exercise video, which will walk you through these principles in more detail, but we'll go through them briefly here in the context of hysteria. First, let's look here at the last five notes of the first bar, which are the notes we left out before. And we have no open string bounces here, right? So there's no relief for your fretting hand. And there are a couple things you need to do to play this clean. First, pick a fretting fingering and stick to it. Don't keep changing it. And I recommend you play this pinky, pinky, ring, index, ring, and then just microchip like this if you can't make that stretch. 
but you can use another fingering too. Second, watch out for the old lift and press where the fingers that you aren't fretting with are just like flying off the neck because this wastes energy and it's harder to play clean at speed. So when you're pressing with the pinky, the other finger should also be down. And then when you go to the ring, the only finger that should lift up is the pinky. They should stay down and then release to the index back to the ring. The middle should come down also. Challenge six is to nail this chunk in the first bar, which is the same as in the last bar, in isolation. And you should start each of these challenges with no metronome, no track, just going super, super slow and looping the chunk. Make sure you're sticking to your fingering, pinky, ring, index ring, or whatever you're using, and keep your fingers down. This is better than just practicing it in the song because you do more repetitions in less time, so you improve faster. Only start doing this with a metronome if you're keeping the fingers down nicely, and then maybe start at 50 BPM and work your way up. You pass this challenge when you can play this clean with good rhythm and technique at song speed, which we'll try in a minute. Challenge seven is to repeat the process, but now with the last five notes of the second bar. These notes are easier on the fretting hand, but the string crossing adds some challenge for the coordination with your plucking hand. So make sure you've got a consistent fingering over here too, whether you're strictly alternating or doing some raking. So again, you wanna start super slow and then start looping it with a metronome. Challenge eight is to finish up the bass line in the third bar. And this part is actually an open string bounce chunk since there's only two notes at a time between open strings, but it happens so many times in a row that it's extra challenging. So I recommend you finger this open, middle, index, open, middle, index, open, middle, index for simplicity. And really watch that index finger and make sure it comes down with the middle or at least close to. It's pretty tricky. All right, let's see what you're made of. We're gonna play through the progression and only play those ending chunks from the last few challenges. So skip whichever ones you're not ready for and use the speed controls as needed. Let's just give it a go. Here we go, one, two, three. You're through all the technical challenges, you're almost ready to put this whole bass line together, but your hysteria won't be complete unless you nail that killer tone. So here's the deal, you're not gonna be able to perfectly replicate Chris Wolstenholm's sound unless you have like four Marshall stacks and a bunch of out of production boutique effects pedals. But all you really need to get a decent replica is a good starting clean tone and then some distortion mixed in. So challenge nine is to dial in your clean tone. To approximate Chris's sound, you want a two pickup bass like this jazz bass, uh, ideally, but a single pickup will be okay too. Some fresh strings wouldn't hurt to give you some nice clackiness. Make sure your tone knob is rolled all the way up if you have a passive tone knob. And then maybe try a boost in your treble or your high mids, either on the bass EQ, if you have one, or on your amp. It's not an exact science. There's a lot of tones that would work, but here's an example of like something that would be like way too dark and muffly. Just like boomy and you can't tell what it is, right? And then here's, I don't even wanna hear what this is gonna sound like, but here's like, terribly, terribly tinny sounding. Okay, so you don't want it to be painful to listen to either. So you're going for like Goldilocks. You want it to cut through, but not be painful to listen to. And on this bass, that would maybe sound something like this. And finally, challenge 10 is to add in your distortion. So what you need here is something with a clean blend option, meaning you can combine the clean tone you just dialed in with some of the distorted sound. So you just need something like this blend knob on this deluxe bass Big Muff Pi or whatever distortion you have. Other than a clean blend, your exact distortion pedal doesn't really matter all that much. Just dial in whatever sounds the most hysteria e to you. But if you have a killer sounding setup for this song, please share it in the comments below so we can all have gear acquisition syndrome relapses together. Sir, this is your bank. We're calling because you're overdrawn again. Have you been buying more gear? Oh crap. One last tip before we put this all together, don't practice with the distortion on all the time because clean tone makes it a lot easier to hear your mistakes so you can actually fix them. You made it. We're gonna put this all together so you can see how every challenge gets you to the finish line. We're gonna play them all in order and lump some of the similar ones together. We'll start with the speed blasts, then the endurance challenge, then all the open string bounce stuff, then all the efficient fretting bits, then we'll throw it all together with distortion at the end. If you can get all the way to the final product with me, that's great. Otherwise, just keep playing at your current level as we go. And again, use the speed controls as needed. So starting with those bursts of 16th notes, let's do it. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Now 
across straight 16ths. Now open string balance. Now just the efficient fretting. Now kick on the distortion and put it all together. Nice work! So how can you take this approach on other hard songs? First, you want to ask yourself, what's hard about the song for me? Is it the fretting? Is it the plucking? Is it the rhythm? And then you want to break it down into challenges and make yourself a plucking exercise based on the song or a rhythm exercise, whatever. What you don't want to do is just keep trying to nail the song by playing it over and over and over again. You probably need to isolate your sticking points like we did with Hysteria. So try this out on your next challenge tune, keep working on Hysteria, and maybe someday you'll even make it to the secret boss level.